Look, don't get me wrong. I'm as spectacle as the next person of the Houston Rockets offering Fred Van Vliet a three-year, 40-something million dollar deal. I think it is pretty outrageous and probably not the best contract. But in saying this, there is a lot of talk going around on the internet that is basically saying that the Houston Rockets have had the worst offseason of all time. And let me start off by saying the Houston Rockets have not had the worst offseason of all time in any means at all. In fact, they haven't had even a bad offseason. If you actually start to look at this roster and how it's being constructed and you don't necessarily focus on the money that they threw a bunch of these players, then you start to realize, hold on a second, this offseason for the Rockets was actually pretty decent and they go from arguably the worst team in the league to a team that might actually shock some people and somewhat not only compete for a play-in, but maybe try and compete for the playoffs next season. Now, before you get angry at me and start attacking me, hear, hear me out real quick. Fred Van Vliet, although not having the greatest season shooting-wise and all that type of stuff, we got to remember the year before that, Fred Van Vliet actually had a really good season where he was actually an all-star. Yes, I know. Fred Van Vliet was an all-star. I feel like a lot of people really forget about that. Then the second you know, thing is about Fred Van Vliet, if we take into the fact that not only was Fred Van Vliet an all-star, if we're not going to worry about his shooting percentages that he did have last season, and we actually talk about the fact that Fred Van Vliet is exactly the playmaker that the Houston Rockets do need, then it starts to look a little better. We're going to remember the Houston Rockets' number one playmaker last year was, I believe, Kevin Porter Jr., who I think barely averaged around four assists per game. Not just that, at one stage in the season, averaged nearly almost as many turnovers as assists per game. Kevin Porter Jr. was not a good playmaker last season. In fact, he was probably one of the most turnover-prone point guards in the NBA. The realistic thing is, that's not Kevin Porter's junior role, and it's not what it's supposed to be, is to be a playmaker. In my opinion, KPJ's best spot in the NBA is going to be a really nice, high-scoring six-man off the bench. Funnily enough, that's exactly what the Houston Rockets have him doing right now. They replace a dude who was averaging as many turnovers as assists per game, who was kind of really hurting the ball movement, with a guy in Fred Van Vliet, who is going to probably average you around 7 to 8 assists per game, is much more steady, much more controlled, and will just make the ball movement 10 times better. Not just that, Kevin Porter Jr. gets to do what he does great, and be an extremely high efficient scorer, I believe, off the bench. So bringing in Fred Van Vliet has not only steadied the playmaking and made that all better, but you've also made Kevin Porter Jr. a way better player and give him uh, the ability to play his natural role. So that's why Fred Van Vliet, at the end of the day, is probably a good signing for this team, even though they probably overpaid him by about 15 million too much per season. The other thing is, Dylan Brooks is an exceptional signing. Yes, I know he should not be on 20 million a year for four years, and the rumors that he were only getting 12 million a year apparently ended up being false because the Rockets extremely overpaid. Not counting any of that in, Dylan Brooks is exactly the player that the Houston Rockets need. The Rockets were one of the worst defensive teams, if not the worst defensive team last season. Not only was their ball movement terrible, but they couldn't defend anything. They legitimately looked like training cones out there. I know Dylan Brooks gets a lot of hate online and is honestly, yes, probably a bit of a tool, not going to lie. But in saying all that, just because he might not be the greatest person to root for, he's still a really solid NBA player. I feel like people get confused about that. They think just because he's not a very good guy in their opinion, he can't play basketball. Realistic thing is, he might not be that efficient, but we know that Dylan Brooks is still a 14 point per game type of guy who used to average 18 on a really good team, and he's one of the best defenders in the league who made all defensive second team. It's a great signing by the Houston Rockets, and I believe he'll start at the three next season and be a perfect fit. And if Dylan Brooks can get his three-point shooting back to what it used to be when he was a role player in the NBA, 
then he's going to be a really good addition for this Houston Rockets team. In saying those two signings were really good, we got to remember the other three key players that the Houston Rockets brought in. As I said, they were one of the worst defensive teams in the league. So what do they go out and do? They go and draft the best defensive guard, I believe, in this draft in Eamon Thompson, who we know can definitely lock down a player or two with his extremely impressive length. He's a six foot seven guy who can guard one through three, and he'll probably be their backup guard. He'll just be a really good defender for this team. And another young prospect who's going to be extremely athletic and could even be another scorer in a couple years time. Then you look at Jeff Green, another thing this team really lacked was veteran presence. The veteran they had in Eric Gordon really did not want to play for this Houston Rockets team and they desperately needed to get rid of him and then find a replacement. They go out and bring Jeff Green in on a really nice contract of only 6 million who's an NBA champion, a dude who can put you up like still 6 points a game on pretty good 3 point percentage while being an awesome veteran who can help mentor a bunch of these younger players. If anyone's my favorite signing, it's probably Jeff Green. He's been an extremely underrated player for so long in the NBA and I'm finally glad he got more than just the minimum contract. And again, he gets to go out and be a veteran, play some good minutes, and he's another good three-point shooter that's gonna add to this team. And then the fifth and final one is Jock Landau. Jock Landau had a really underrated season for the Phoenix Suns last year. Again, he's only going to get better. He's going to start for the Australian Boomers team in the FIBA 2023, I believe, World Cup. And then he'll, of course, be the starting center for the Australian Boomers 2024 Olympics team. He's only getting better. He was a very late bloomer. I believe he's about 27, but it's almost like in a way he's about 23. He's definitely been a late bloomer into this basketball and again he's getting better and better every single year again he's going to be a really nice backup center and even if he doesn't do well i believe only the first year is guaranteed so if they don't want to pay him the 50 million over the four years or whatever that they owe him they can again get rid of him i believe again really good things to the houston rockets it was a really good off season so far with a lot of really really impressive signings and right now you're looking at a really solid team. The only issue I really think is wrong with this team is probably their center, you know, defense. Again, Alvin Schengen's a really solid player, but he's one of the worst defensive centers in the league. He definitely needs to improve on that, and they didn't really get much better defensively with Jock Landau back there. It's something that you might want to be worrying about, but in, in all accounts, this is a really good team that should push for the playoffs. You'll have a starting five of like Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith, and Alfred Schengen. And off the bench, you're going to have Kevin Porter Jr., Eamon Thompson, Jeff Green will of course be there, Jock Landale will be there, and you'll have a bunch of these other dudes that are definitely going to come in. Cam Whitmore as well, they drafted, who could have been the steal of the draft. Haven't even mentioned him yet. Um, just Sean Tate is still on this team, which not many people remember, but he's still there. And they'll have a couple other guys here and there rocking with this team. So I think it's going to be a really good Houston Rockets team. Again, they don't have much more room to move in free agency or probably the next couple years of free agency. But I don't think they really care because at the end of the day, they've kind of got their foundation now. And they're just going to hope this team gets better and better as it gets older. And of course, they'll still probably draft as the years go on. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you guys like this new Houston Rockets team? And do you guys think they've had an underrated offseason? Of course, I would very much like to know. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the gaming channel, my IRL slash long channels. Links for them will be in the description down below. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.